The Nikon P1000 is one of the most interesting cameras ever made, and there's no question as to why that is. It's because of its incredible 24 to 3000 or 125 times zoom range. Now this is a channel that covers vintage technology with an emphasis on video and video cameras. And even though the Nikon is technically not yet vintage, it will surely go down in history as a future piece of tech to remember. In this video, I'll be covering some features of the camera mainly as they pertain to video. I'm not gonna go through all the basics and setup. There are tons of videos on YouTube about that. But you'll get some extreme zoom examples, some astrophotography examples. What's an orange dot on a roof it becomes a full life construction worker with the P1000. Take a look at this example. You can barely see people in the background. And I'm gonna show you the various zoom ranges. You've probably seen other examples like this, but it never really ceases to amaze. It is a little shaky, but these are all handheld, and this is at full telly. And yes, this is the wide angle scene. You can't even see anyone. So the P1000 is actually considered a point and shoot camera, even though this is not your typical point and shoot camera because it's kind of big and chunky and heavy. It's more of a bridge camera, I would consider it, because of its really long zoom range. So for purposes of comparison, let's say you wanted to get a long zoom range on a mirrorless or DSLR camera. So after shelling out money for the camera, you got to spend almost $2,000 for a lens that only goes out to 600 millimeters, as opposed to having this all-in-one solution and all under $1,000. It really is quite a bargain. But do you get what you pay for? Let's put that to the test. Why don't we just take a look and see for most shooting situations in bright sunny conditions, which is where you're probably gonna be doing a lot of shooting in this camera, how it actually does compare. So in this test, we're gonna compare the Sony Alpha 1, set at 28 millimeters with a Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter lens. And let's compare that now with a Nikon, also at 28 millimeters. Both shot in 4K30, both with stabilization on. Now here is the scene with the Sony and the Tamron at its full telephoto that it's capable of, which is 200 millimeters. And you can compare that to the Nikon at 200 millimeters as well. Again, take a look for yourself, see what you think, see what the trade-offs are, and you be the judge. Yeah, but I mean, come on, it's still a small cell phone size sensor. What about like low light performance and overall picture quality? Won't it really be a problem? But cell phone video today is not the same as it was like 25 years ago when it looked like this. Today, cell phone camera technology has skyrocketed. People are using iPhones to shoot movies and the size of the chip is only one component to overall picture quality. Can the Nikon shoot capable 4K video? Well, here's a shot. I think it looks good, sharp and punchy. Here's a shot in the city where you can see the detail in the buildings. I actually had the camera shooting out the window as a thunderstorm started rolling in and I can show you how to do this effect in the camera as well. It's interesting because this storm produced something very rare in New York City as a side note. Those little things bouncing off the terrace, that's hail. With regards to low light, here's a scene with me just standing around on the corner like a weirdo. Since it was all the way zoomed in, the aperture was at its worst so you wouldn't normally zoom like this in low light. While on the street, I actually snapped a photo of my building with my iPhone. And you can get an idea of how crazy this zoom is, how far you have to pinch in on the photo to even remotely see where the camera is perched on the balcony. It really is nuts. The Nikon zoom range really lends itself to astrophotography. It's not recommended to do it in the city with the bright city lights, but I did it anyway. And you can see the moon comes out great. There's only so many times you can shoot the moon, but when you do, it's amazing. Now, I saw this bright star in the sky. I didn't know what it was till I zoomed in on it. And then when I saw the moons, I realized this must be Jupiter. So you have to fiddle around with the exposure a little bit and it gets a little clearer. I put it into Final Cut Pro, lowered the exposure further, increased the sharpness by about 20% and cropped in because I shot it in 4K. And wow, yes, you can see the bands of Jupiter. And I'm sure it would look even better if you shot outside the city in darker, less light polluted skies. It looks as good as I remember as a kid using my Questar and Tasco telescopes. So in addition to astrophotography, this camera lends itself to wildlife photography. But not only that kind of wildlife. Take a look at the building across from mine, the roof. 
Yeah, more like this kind of wildlife. I literally had no idea anything was going on on that roof across the way until I zoomed in with this camera. It really was like shocking, like what is going on here? And this is not even at full zoom. This is at the full zoom level. And in case you don't believe me that this was going on across the roof, I'll zoom back and you can see exactly where it was. Okay, so for this next test, I'm gonna go down to street level and see if I can't give away this rose to some stranger. Now, I know that sounds like a strange thing to do, but this is New York City and people are kind of mistrusting, so they may not take it right away. Let's see if I can get some New Yorker to take this rose and see how it goes. But the main reason is to test the incredible zoom capabilities of the P1000. Now, naturally, I'm not gonna use the built-in audio because you won't be able to hear anything. So I have this clip-on mic, which is inconspicuously attached to my shirt, which I'll use and sync up the sound later. So let's get to it. So here is the setup for this social experiment. The camera is tripod mounted, pointed to the street below, about two blocks away. Now it can't be at full zoom because then you won't be able to see me move around or it'll be too tight. So it's gonna be about 600 millimeters, which should be just enough space to see the action. So let's go check it out. Can I give you this rose? <laughs> should probably, th see this is what I mean. It may not be that easy giving away a rose. She just walked by, she didn't even say yes. Can I give you this rose? My girlfriend broke up with me. You don't, I'm, I'm not gonna have it if you want it. It's up to you, no strings. Thank you. I mean, I, I thought I was big, I thought I was being a nice guy, but you know, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So this scene is actually a block further away at full zoom, and I'm gonna take a picture of my building with my iPhone so you can see the camera on the terrace. Can you? I mean, you really gotta look closely. It's right there, can't you see it? <laughs> it's really crazy. So it's great to mount the camera on a tripod if you can, but a lot of the times you'll be hand-holding. Let's compare the stabilization modes. This is active stabilization, or what Nikon says, vibration reduction active. And we'll compare that with the normal stabilization mode. Now, active is supposed to give a more strong stabilization, but I'm not really seeing it here. As a matter of fact, normal uh, seems just fine. And if for some reason you decide to turn stabilization off, you're gonna get something that looks like this. So I don't recommend it at full zoom. Uh, it may cause some stomach upset. Now, would you be surprised if I told you this was not a zoom shot? That I was actually right up against the flower? That this camera has an incredible macro capability in addition to its incredible super zoom? Yes, it's both a telescope and a microscope. You can literally bring the camera right into the face of your favorite pet, but I don't recommend it. It's much better for something that's not really alive. But look how close you can get. It's really pretty cool. Now let's talk about the other very nice features of this camera. Sure, it has a great bright LCD screen that folds out but it also has a really nice viewfinder, and you're gonna to wanna to use that actually more often, especially when you're zooming for support and stability. And the viewfinder is really nice and bright and is a pleasure to look through. There's also a zoom lever on the side of the camera as well. When you're in the bird mode, one press of the OK button immediately zooms up to a thousand millimeters, which is cool. If you're zoomed in tight and lost your subject, hit the snapback feature and the lens comes back out so you find your place, and then when you release it, it zooms back in where you were. It actually is a very handy and useful feature. The camera does output an uncompressed HDMI signal, but not in 4K, only 1080p. You can see your zoom range in the viewfinder, however, only when you're not recording. For some reason, when you hit record, that meter goes away, and I'm not really sure why they did that. Are you ready for another surprise? Another feature of the camera. While you're shooting video, by pressing the shutter button, you can take pictures during video recording. In 4K, you can take up to 20 pictures, and it shows you in the upper left how many you have left. I recommend you do this when shooting 4K because it's higher quality. And you could see these photos don't look bad. They're about eight megapixels. And as you can see, each time you press the shutter button, it gives you a countdown of how many photos you have left. Now there is a video record limit of 30 minutes, but a cool feature is you can actually pause recording by hitting the OK button and it will stop. And then when you hit OK again, it'll resume recording. 
When you do it this way, you'll just have one file instead of multiple files. Now another little nice touch you can do after you shoot your video is actually trim it. You can only do the beginning and end of the clip, but you just select the point that you want to choose your start point, and then you select your end point. And after you have that set, you just hit save, and your file will be reduced. You can also save a frame from the video by clicking on this button right here. The camera does give you an option to shoot in slow motion by selecting the 60 frames per second under the movie option. When you select that, you'll be seeing your video back in slow motion when you put it on a 30 frames per second timeline. The only disadvantage is you're limited to 720p, so you are going to have reduced resolution, but you can see the movement is quite nice and smooth. Conversely, there's an option for fast motion at the 15 frames per second option. Now this does give you 1080p, so it's higher quality and like a Charlie Chaplin effect. You can also shoot time lapse. And here's an example setting it to the cityscape option where the camera will just shoot a frame every few seconds and then it actually stitches it together in the camera so you don't have to do any work which is nice and it produces a very cool looking time lapse effect and it gives you 1080p resolution unfortunately none of these speeds are in 4k there's a super lapse effect which is kind of similar to time lapse but this is again more like very fast motion and you can do 2, 4, 10, this is actually in 20 times, so you're really talking Charlie Chaplin. Let's test the Zoom microphone now to see if it works as advertised, which is supposedly gives you a better sound when zoomed in. Okay, we are zoomed in and the Zoom mic is in the on position. We are zoomed in and the Zoom mic is in the on position. Fortunately, this camera has a flip-out screen. Now the zoom mic is on. So let's see if it makes a difference. We're talking at the same volume as I did before. We have a lot of singing noise around us. You be the judge, but I actually think the zoom mic is worse when it's on. I hear a bit of distortion and actually the wind made it worse. So I would leave the zoom mic off. I really don't think it does much or helps. The batteries on this camera are really, really small and light and they don't last very long because of that. What I really recommend is, first of all, you need to have an extra battery on hand. You don't want to get caught short. But the way you charge the battery on this camera is kind of awkward. It's through a USB cable that you need to be attached to either a wall plug or a computer. This is one of the best deals you can find on Amazon. It's this dual bay charger, which accepts two batteries. So you can charge them both at the same time and you don't have to have it connected to the camera. And on this deal on Amazon, it comes with two extra batteries and the charger at a very great price. So I really recommend you look into that. So let's talk about taking photos and the camera gives you a variety of options, including RAW or RAW and JPEG with a variety of image sizes and resolutions as well, including a pop-up flash, which is very nice. So who's the man on top of the rock? Well, it's him, thanks to a 3000 millimeter zoom, which I handheld. When taking pictures, it's about being at the right place at the right time. You gotta love this. One guy's reading his old school book, the other one reading on her iPhone. Care to take a guess as to which one subscribes to Tech to Remember? A couple of little tricks the camera can do. One is a double exposure, which is kind of nice. It does it right in camera. The nightscape light trails effect is cool if you're in a city environment at night with car headlights. The camera will take a series of pictures successively. You set the shutter speed and then it composites them. And the results are very interesting. You get a different shot every time. And there's a lot more creative effects that the camera can do. This is just a couple of examples which I found kind of interesting and, and fun to use. For a point and shoot camera, it offers a lot of creativity in addition to that incredible zoom. So who is this woman just standing on the corner? Well, as your reward for sticking with me till the end of the video, we're going to use the Nikon P1000 to find out as I go approach her. Hi. That's outside? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. 
I have a YouTube channel too, so maybe I get a discount. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. It's a psychic, right? Yeah. Can she predict if I'll get a thousand subscribers, you think? Yeah, maybe. Oh, she can do that. Okay. She's, is she good? Yeah. Oh, all right. Great. <laughs> thank you. As she looks back, she's probably thinking, who is that guy? Hmm. Maybe I should have asked her what piece of equipment we'll be reviewing next on Tech to Remember. Well, you'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe and like. Feel free to comment, I do answer. And we'll see you in the next video.